Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Priya, a final year medical student in Newcastle University Medicine, Malaysia. And today, we are going to look into interpreting abdominal x-ray, especially for medical students. So in this video, I'll be going through uh, an algorithm or a systematic way for the abdominal x-ray. And then I will demonstrate one example to consolidate your understanding even better. Let's get into it now. So first you want to understand about anatomy when you want to interpret something in abdominal x-ray. So here we have the diagram of large bowel. So you have the cecum here and then ascending colon and then transverse colon. And then you have the descending colon. Here you have the sigmoid colon and finally the rectum. So this is very important when you are writing down your report in your exams or in hospital placements. Okay. Now, how do we interpret abdominal x-ray? I've been using this BBC method since year 3 and I think it really worked pretty well. So let's get into it. First, patient details. Mention the patient's name, the date of birth, when was the abdominal x-ray taken. Then you get into the image quality. The most common projection is normally AP supine view. So you want to mention that. And then you talk about the exposure. Is it? Can you see the diaphragm? till the pelvis then yes it is a well exposed film or an adequate film and then if there is any previous imaging for comparison you want to mention that in your report as well then you get into the b first it's bowel so you want to look into the small bowel the large bowel after you're looking at that look at other abdominal visceral organs as well like lungs liver gallbladder stomach the psoas muscle the kidney the spleen the bladder as well and then here you have the extra luminal gas. So if you notice any air under diaphragm or any pneumoperitoneum, you want to mention that as well because there's a risk of perforation. The next B will be bone. So here you want to mention if there's any bony lesion like sclerotic or lytic lesion or any fracture. So look at all the bony areas in the abdominal x-ray. Then you get into C, calcification. So calcification, they are very highly op opaque. So you can really see them very whitish in abdominal x-ray. So things like calculus, ureteric stent, or even contrast after taking barium meal or some foreign bodies. Things like the clips, surgical clips or inwelling lines, you can notice them in this area. <clears throat> then finally, you want to summarize your finding and mention your impression. What do you think the pathology is here? is all about now let's look into bowel obstruction in more detail what is it all about so it's commonly asked in medical student finals compared to other pathology so it's very important to know the difference between small bowel versus large bowel dilation so first the location so small bowel is placed centrally compared to large bowel and that is why when they are dilated they are more clearly seen dilated in the central region of abdominal x-ray. Next thing you want to notice that's very obvious is the mucosal fold. It's what we call it as valvulae conniventis. So this is like a gastric fold but it is in the small intestine. So it's like a circular fold that reach around the whole circumference of the intestine. Whereas in contrast, hostra in large bowel which is here they don't reach around the whole circumference they are just partially on the side so you don't see them crossing the whole lumen of the intestine so that's the main difference of valvulae conniventis and hosta which i will show you in the diagram later on as well so what is this diameter it might look very confusing to you so there is a rule called 369 rule which can be easier to remember so three is for small intestine so small bowel need to be less than 3 cm whereas large bowel need to be less than 6 cm and this is for cecum it needs to be less than 9 cm so let's say if your small bowel is measured more than 3 cm then you know the small bowel is dilated so this is a simple rule to remember whether your bowel is dilated or not next thing is the content in the small bowel so normally in the con uh, small bowel you just notice things like gas or fluid levels so fluid level is very clear you can notice them 
by looking at the abdominal x-ray but in large bowel you don't really notice fluid level it's more of a solid content like the feces so it's not very clear clearly seen in the large bowel finally you want to know about the causes of the obstruction the most common cause of small bowel obstruction is adhesions so this happen when the patient has a very severe like a major gi surgery then um, it might develop uh, additions in their bowel and cause small bowel obstruction many many years later the other causes are things like hernia tumor gallstones whereas in large bowel obstruction the most common cause will be tumor which we call it as could be a colorectal cancer or rectal cancer or colon cancer so others will be abscess diverticular disease and also valvulus all right now let's look into what's this valvule conventis and hostel fold is all about which we call them as mucosal fold if you notice here this diagram is placed centrally and is dilated and this is we call it as valvule conventis because the line is passing through the whole lumen which you can see here whereas in hostra you don't really clearly see the lines passing through the whole lumen they are just more on the side and if you notice they are more on the periphery compared to here here is more central and here is more periphery so this is small bowel obstruction and this will be large bowel obstruction all right let's have a practice and go through one abdominal x-ray a 65 year old gentleman mr wesley presents with absolute constipation nausea and fecal and vomiting there is a proceeding history of increasing constipation over the last month with blood mixed in with stool there has been 3 kg unintentional weight loss over the preceding 2 months an abdominal x-ray has been performed describe your findings impression and your further plan all right let's look into it now so here we have the abdominal x-ray of mr wesley so let's write down the algorithm first before you forget so it's bowel bone and calcification so like i mentioned earlier don't straight away go into the imaging let's look into the patient details so normally you want to mention about the patient details the date of birth name the time when the film was taken but here we don't really have the details but it's okay let's move on so if you notice this is the left side of the patient this should be the right side of the patient okay and next you want to look into the exposure and the projection so normally projection commonly for abdominal x-ray it would be supine ap view and for the exposure if you notice i don't really see the dye from here the spleen here and if you notice the dilatation of this bowel you are not sure which bowel is this yet but it's extending into somewhere else and it's not complete you know so it's not really exposed well here and you don't really see from diaphragm to pelvis here so probably for me i would say that this is a not really an adequate form okay okay now let's look into bowel first of all if you look here there's an obvious dilatation of the this is a large bowel why because it's placed on the periphery and if you notice this is hostel full they are not fully reaching the lumen so this is what we call hostel folds and they are seen in large bowel obstruction at the same time if you notice here there's some like obstruction here right it's narrowing so this is actually what we call it as cut off point and if you remember the anatomy this is your sigmoid colon and probably my guess is there could be some kind of malignancy or some kind of tumor abscess here that is blocking the region here and causing the large bowel obstruction and this is also a large bowel obstruction because of the hostel fold and also it's placed on the periphery of the abdominal x-ray the next thing you want to look at is in the middle don't forget the central region if you notice the small bowel is dilated as well and here you can actually notice the 
Velvule Coniventes and and also they are placed in central so probably this is also a small bowel obstruction so what's happening here is this um, some kind of obstruction here is causing the large bowel dilation and probably the patient's ileocecal valve is weak so what happened is all the content in the large bowel they are being back pressured into your small bowel and that is why this patient is having a small bowel dilatation as well okay so that's the idea of it so that means here both the bowel is dilated okay the next thing you want to look is the bone so in the bone what do you want to mention was there, was there any sclerotic lesion or is there any fracture so if you want to see the main stuff you want to look at the chanton's line hmm, there's no fracture the iliopectineal line okay there is no sclerotic or lytic lesion that you want to observe okay so probably the bone quality is good or you can just say there is no lytic or sclerotic lesion next is calcification so in calcification like i mentioned earlier there, there could be like ureteric stent or like um, catheter or like uh, the calculus calcification could happen in the renal pelvis but you don't really see any obvious whitish very very white opacity in the abdominal x-ray so probably there is no calcification here so that's all so basically this is a small and large bowel dilatation here's the sample answer of the abdominal x-ray we discussed earlier this is a supine ap view abdominal x-ray of mr wesley the image was taken today let's say it's 9 a.m and there are no previous imaging if there is a hospital number you want to mention that as well the film is inadequate as we discussed since the entire abdomen is not adequately visualized now you get into bowel the most striking abnormality is the dilated gas loops of bowel around the periphery of the abdomen you get to see the hostile folds consistent with dilated large bowel there is an abrupt cutoff point in the sigmoid colon in the left iliac fossa no gas is demonstrated in the rectum so we didn't see any fluid level as well so probably it's just a uh, gas the prominent loops of gas built bowel this is the sample answer of the abdominal x-ray we discussed earlier so this is a supine ap view abdominal x-ray of mr wesley the image was taken today at 9 a.m and there are no previous imaging if there is hospital number you want to let that down write that down as well the film is inadequate as we discussed since the entire abdomen is not adequately visualized next you get into the bowel the most striking abnormality is the dilated gas fill loops of bowel around the periphery of the abdomen Hostile folds are noted consistent with dilated large bowel and um, there is an abrupt cutoff point in the sigmoid colon in the left iliac fossa. Since there was no fluid level noticed, we are going to just say that there are no gas is demonstrated in the rectum and there was no solid feces seen also. The prominent loops of gas filled bowel within central abdomen demonstrate valvulae coniventes and are consistent with dilated small bowel. And we didn't see any fluid levels, so that is why we didn't, don't have to mention them. There is no evidence of pneumoperitoneum or mucosal edema. There is no obvious abnormality of the visible solid abdominal organs and there are no skeletal abnormality or bone classification noted. So in this case, my impression is this is a small and large bowel dilation, but probably it's due to the sigmoid colon pathology, which causes the mechanical large bowel obstruction and subsequent small bowel dilation as well. There is a secondary small bowel dilatation due to the back pressure and an incompetent ileocecal valve. So the sigmoid pathology could represent colorectal malignancy. In this case, what we have to do is we need to have an urgent surgical assessment, request an erect chest x-ray to look for any evidence of air under diaphragm, which we call it as pneumoperitoneum, and consider the requirement for a CT scan as well. Thank you for watching my videos and hope you learned something today. Please do subscribe, like and comment. Till I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.